A spaceship disguised as a rock? A civilization on Venus? What's going on? Today, I'm exploring some of the craziest and most profound mysteries that scientists can't explain, but we're gonna try. Three Whale Rock Thailand is known for its temples and palaces, as well as its pristine beaches and bustling night markets. But in the rural jungle of Buen Khan province, there is something far more exciting that most tourists don't know about. It's an unusual rock formation that some say might be a crashed alien ship. The formation is known as Three Whale Rock, or in Thai, Hin Sam Wan. Scientists claim that it's 75 million years old, and there's definitely no spaceship hidden underneath. But hey, it's a fun idea, right? The rock formation is famous because it looks so majestic the way it protrudes from the mountains. It resembles three massive stone whales swimming across the forest canopy, but it also depends on your perspective. The formation also looks like it could potentially be a crashed spaceship that's now overgrown by the jungle. Only two of the rocks are accessible by foot. This formation is in a very isolated part of Thailand, with the hike to reach the three whales being quite the adventure. It's also home to some unusual phenomena. There have been reports of people vanishing mysteriously from the nearby forest. Tourists have reported seeing unidentified objects in the sky. There are also rumors that the stones were carved artificially by a civilization that's since been forgotten to time. Nobody knows the true origins of the stones. So for now, they remain one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of Southeast Asia. And now for number eight, but first, it's shout out time. I want to give a big thank you to Kyle Brown and Kiki Pods for supporting this channel. Thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries or dinosaurs or things scientists can't explain. We've got it all. The Secret of Venus Did you know that Earth has a twin sister? Venus is considered to be the twin of our lovely home planet. But what happened to Venus? Scientists believe that it was once habitable, potentially even hosting an advanced civilization. But then a destructive event occurred, and Venus was turned into a place that's more inhospitable than hell itself. Let me start with a few important facts about Venus. It's the hottest planet in the solar system, even though Mercury is twice as close to the Sun. Venus is so hot because its atmosphere is thick with carbon dioxide. It has a toxic atmosphere between 50 and 90 times denser than the atmosphere of Earth. Venus's toxic clouds may have been the result of runaway greenhouse gases, and the average surface temperature is a balmy 878 degrees Fahrenheit. It's hard to imagine that a place where the air is hot enough to melt lead could have once been home to life. Yet that's exactly what scientists are suggesting. NASA's instruments have observed rocks on the surface of Venus that were obviously formed by water erosion. All signs point to Venus having liquid water on its surface for at least 2 billion consecutive years. But what scientists don't know is what happened to Venus. Was there really life on the planet? Could there have been a human-like civilization that was destroyed by a global catastrophe? And more importantly, could such a catastrophe ever occur here on Earth? Scientists believe that whatever the catastrophe was, it took place about 700 million years ago. Something caused a sudden release of carbon dioxide that's dramatically transformed Venus's climate. This was legitimate climate change, transforming Venus from a potentially green and lush planet into a barren wasteland. Michael Way from the Goddard Institute of Space Science called it a near-global resurfacing event, the theory of phlogiston. In the 17th century, scientists didn't understand heat or combustion. They understood that fire was hot, but nobody really knew why. So scientists came up with theories to explain how heat works. And the weirdest one by far was the theory of phlogiston. This theory was a way to explain why heat could be felt away from a burning object. Scientists were baffled that a fire could burn and heat could be felt far away from the physical flames. So they decided that there must be an invisible material escaping from the flames to make the surrounding area warm. This invisible material then became known as phlogiston. 
Scientists theorized that phlogiston was the essence of heat itself. It was an invisible and indestructible substance that was released whenever anything was warm or hot. The reason I want to talk about this theory is so that you get a good idea of how science is constantly changing. In the 18th century, scientists built upon the idea of phlogiston. It became an accepted science across the world. But French chemist Antoine Lavoisier soon came up with a new, revolutionary theory that broke away from phlogiston. He decided that there was a physical substance called caloric that was responsible for heat. Antoine tried to explain friction by saying when a person rubbed their hands together hard enough, caloric leaked from their skin to make their hands hot, then drifted away in the air. Caloric lasted until around the 19th century. It was only 200 years ago that scientists began to understand the power of energy and the truth of what heat really is. As it turns out, there is no invisible substance that transfers heat from one place to another. The Laetoli Footprints The most unexplainable footprints in the world were found in Africa during the 1970s. It's believed that the footprints belong to an early human ancestor called Australopithecus afarensis. But the truth is not always so simple. I need to take you back in time to 3.6 million years ago. A trio of early humans walked across a vast plain of wet volcanic ash in what's now Tanzania. The three prehistoric humans made their journey and left the area. Once they were gone, a nearby volcano erupted and buried the wet volcanic ash under a new layer of ash. This worked to sandwich the human footprints between the two ashy layers, and it preserved them like handprints in wet cement for all of known history. The footprints were uncovered in 1976 by paleontologist Mary Leakey and her team of experts. The trail is 88 feet long, consisting of about 70 fully formed human footprints. And the whole thing is known as the Laetoli footprints. But who made these things? Were they primitive, ape-like humans who had hardly evolved? Or were they our true ancient ancestors? Here's what scientists know about the creatures who left the footprints. They had big toes that were lined nicely with the rest of their foot. What that means is that their feet were very similar to our own, hardly anything like ape feet. Apes have divergent big toes to assist their tree-climbing abilities, whereas humans don't. The footprints also show the manner of walking that was used by the ancient humans. They landed with their heel, rolled their foot, and pushed off with their toes. They walked the exact same way that you and I walk today. Scientists believe them to be the byproduct of wandering Australopithecus simply because they don't know of any other early humans who lived in the region. The only fossils found in this part of Tanzania from 3 million years ago are Australopithecus fossils. The great unknown is that the identification is only a guess. Scientists don't know for sure who walked across the wet volcanic ash 3.6 million years ago, nor do they know what they looked like. The footprints seem to suggest that they could have been as advanced as modern humans. Slime mold Scientists can't figure out why slime mold is so smart. If you haven't heard of slime mold before, you're about to have your mind blown. Slime mold can be found in forests across the world. Next time you're in an old woodland, push over a fallen log and look at the bottom where it was lying on the moist soil. You might find a brightly yellow fungus spread out with thousands of tiny tendrils. This is a slime mold. It works to slowly consume organic matter, decaying trees and other plants. It's an important part of the food web. Without these kinds of fungi, plants would never decay. What's so interesting about slime mold is its incredible intelligence, despite the fact that it has no brain or nervous system. It's a single cell. The enormous body of the slime mold is just one cell, and it doesn't get simpler than that. Slime mold has been around for over a billion years and has never evolved in the slightest. But don't you need a brain to think? Isn't that the whole thing about humans, that we have highly complex brains that make us intellectually superior? How can a fungus with no type of brain at all learn and adapt? This is what scientists can't figure out. And the truth is that scientists don't even think it's a fungus. It's not technically a mold nor is it an animal or a plant. 
Slime Mold is a member of something scientists are calling the Protist Kingdom. It's a loosely defined genre of creature that doesn't belong in any other category. The Slime Mold is able to solve puzzles, as scientists have learned in laboratory tests. Chris Reed from Aquaria University in Australia gave Slime Mold similar problem-solving tests that they give to animals with brains. And somehow, Slime Mold performed just as well. So how can any of this be explained? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Was Rama real? Comparing the mythological Hindu character of Rama with Jesus Christ is a little simplistic, but these two have some shocking similarities. Many Hindus believe that Rama was a real historical figure. Scientists don't think that's true, but they also doubt Jesus' existence 2,000 years ago. So who exactly was Rama? In the ancient Hindu text, the Ramayana, it says Rama was born when the god Vishnu impregnated his mother with divine nectar. Much like Jesus Christ, Rama was born through a human woman who was touched by a god. The rest of the Ramayana details the extraordinary adventures of Rama. He slays a bunch of demons, hangs out with a monkey god, and in the end, he defeats the legendary demon king Ravana. That's a serious condensing of the story, but basically Rama was an epic hero, not unlike Hercules or Gilgamesh. Did he really exist though? Many of the places in the story of Rama were real places. His adventures took him across no less than 30 legitimate ancient sites in Sri Lanka. Scholars think he may have been a real hero, possibly even a king. But scientists argue that he couldn't have possibly been real. Their primary reasoning is that there isn't any other evidence for his existence outside the Ramayana. But you could say the same thing about other historical figures. There is very little real evidence of Jesus Christ outside of the Bible. There isn't even evidence that Socrates existed outside of his writings, or Confucius for that matter. So here we are, life on Earth. The biggest thing that scientists can't explain on the planet is how life got started in the first place. The question comes in several different parts though. It isn't as simplistic as asking what came first. For example, scientists don't know where the water on our planet comes from, and they don't even know what life really is. When the planet started out 4.5 billion years ago, it didn't have any water on it. At least scientists don't think it did. Water doesn't come with a newly purchased planetary home. It's an addition, like an above-ground swimming pool. Two-thirds of our world is covered in it today, but water likely took a really long time to get here. When Earth first formed, it was so hot that any liquid would have boiled and disappeared into space. The current explanation that makes the most sense is that comets crashed into the surface of the planet carrying frozen ice, and that ice then melted and became the world's oceans. Once the planet had water on it, life became an inevitability. All of a sudden, when the Earth filled to the brim with water, life forms began to evolve. Scientists have been trying to recreate these conditions in laboratories for decades, but they've never been able to pinpoint the eureka moment in which life originated. They think maybe life came to Earth with the water, or maybe it formed in the raging seas, but it's all just guesswork at this point. The Ancient Civilization of North America An indigenous archaeologist believes that scientists are wrong about their interpretation of North America's history. Scientists currently speculate that the first humans in North America arrived around 13,000 years ago. But archaeologist Paulette Steves argues that it was more like 130,000 years ago. Ever since archaeology became a thing in North America, experts have tried to figure out when people first arrived on the continent. The prevailing belief is that it was between 11,000 and 12,000 years ago at the end of the Ice Age. For decades, scientists have clung to the notion that a group known as the Clovis culture populated the United States before anyone else. Recent discoveries have made these previous notions unreliable. In 2017, fossilized footprints were analyzed in New Mexico. The footprints were uncovered in White Sands National Park. They were confirmed to date to 20,000 years ago. This discovery in itself forced archaeologists to backtrack 
and they have now admitted that humans were in North America before they previously thought. Paulette Steve says that human habitation started even earlier. According to Paulette, there is no way that early humans left Asia 2.1 million years ago and didn't continue into North America. Paulette says that it doesn't make any sense that they stopped at the border and left North America unpopulated. Her belief is that people were living in the Americas throughout the Ice Age. But if the theory is true, nobody has found any concrete evidence of it yet. That doesn't mean there couldn't be evidence out there, though. There could be over 100,000 years of human history buried right beneath our feet. Black Hole Radio Signals Astronomers have identified radio signals coming from an enormous black hole. Astronomers at the 500-meter Aperture Spherical Radio Telescope, or FAST for short, were behind the find. The Chinese Institute says that the black hole is about the size of a star. It's positively enormous and likely formed during the death of a colossal star. But why are there radio signals leaking out of a black hole? What in the world is in there? Scientists at the telescope compared the black hole to a cosmic spinning top. It's a maelstrom of cosmic destruction. Professor Wei Wang said that the signal only lasts for 0.2 seconds at a time, transmitting at a frequency of 5 Hz. Experts have suggested that the signal could be the result of dust and gas spinning in the black hole, but it's tough to solve a mystery that's 28,000 light years away. Maybe what Earth scientists are picking up are the dying screams of an advanced civilization, an alien race that's being pulled helplessly into the eternal disintegration that takes place at the very pit of a black hole. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Gobekli Tepe The temple complex of Gobekli Tepe in Turkey is a prehistoric marvel of humanity. This sacred place was constructed 11,500 years ago by hunter-gatherers in what could be the first temple and religious center used by humans anywhere on the planet. To give you an idea of how significant it is, Gobekli Tepe was erected 6,000 years before Stonehenge, and new discoveries at the site are changing the way we view the rise of civilization. The megaliths here were built and arranged by prehistoric people that did not yet have metal tools or even pottery. Thanks to new research, it seems that the ancient humans who built Gobekli Tepe may have been inspired by geometry. Researchers are saying they found proof that the impressive stone structures and the huge limestone pillars were pre-planned before development, which would mean that this could be the very first instance of humans using geometry to build a great structure, as well as the first example of a planned temple complex. There are many pits surrounded by standing stones or pillars arranged in circles. Each circle has a similar layout with two large stone T-shaped pillars with smaller stones facing inward. The tallest pillars are 16 feet high, weighing between 7 and 10 tons. Some carved out sections of rock are called portals, and this unusual double portal has carvings of wild cattle, a boar, and some type of predator. Around the site, some of the stones are plain, while others are full of carvings of all kinds of animals like foxes, lions, scorpions, and birds. There is no evidence of housing or farming in the area, so how were hunter-gatherers able to build something so complex? Researchers used an algorithm based on standard deviation mapping to identify an underlying geometric pattern that regulated the design. Geometry and floor plans are believed to have emerged much later than when Gobekli Tepe was built, after hunter-gatherers became farmers. But this place is proof that architectural planning, abstract design rules, and organizational patterns were already being used before farmers started making their fields into rectangles. Christopher Columbus and Syphilis Archaeologists have made a rather disturbing discovery about the famous explorer Christopher Columbus. As most of us already know, the Italian explorer was the first to venture across the Atlantic Ocean on an official expedition and discover North America for Europe, paving the way for more European explorers and the eventual colonization of the Americas and the utter destruction of its natives. And while a lot of people know that when the first settlers came to America, they brought with them nasty diseases that infected local populations, such as smallpox, what a lot of people don't know is that Christopher Columbus and his crew were also blamed for bringing the sexually transmitted infection called syphilis from America 
back to Europe. That's right, the sharing of diseases was kind of reciprocal. At least, that's what historians thought until now. Syphilis devastated Europe beginning in the late 15th century, right around the same time Columbus returned to Europe. It's an easily curable disease now, but for 20 years following Christopher Columbus's return, millions of people were ravaged and killed by syphilis. Archaeologists recently investigated nine skeletons from Finland, Estonia, and the Netherlands that predate Christopher Columbus. They found inside of their bones traces of the bacteria which causes syphilis, suggesting the disease may have already been in Europe and that Christopher Columbus was blamed for no reason at all. Researchers from the University of Zurich are now saying it wasn't Christopher Columbus's fault and that syphilis may have already been in Europe and its outbreak at the time of Columbus returning from his adventure was just a big coincidence. West African Technologies the human species, also known as Homo sapiens, rose out of Africa roughly 300,000 years ago. Then, according to the official narrative, about 40,000 years ago, the Middle Stone Age began. This marked the end of the longest human culture, primitive cave people, and the beginning of the era of technology. 40,000 years ago, humans started making things, all kinds of things. Clothing, tools, storage for water, personal decorations, bows and arrows, you know what I mean. But something that has boggled archaeologists and anthropologists for a long time is just how the Middle Stone Age ended. Meaning, how did we get over the Stone Age and move into the more complex stages of mastering iron and copper? The answer may lie in West Africa. Recent archaeological work in Senegal has led to the discovery of a mysterious site in the north of the country where the Middle Stone Age ended much more recently than in other parts of the world. The site has been dated back around 12,000 years. The people here never developed beyond the Middle Stone Age, which is confusing because most other places were already heavily advanced by this time. Evidence from Senegal suggests climate change could be the reason for the slow evolution. Because this area of West Africa never saw such a harsh change in climate as the Ice Age ended, like other places around the world, it created stability. The stability meant the people didn't have any need to change or evolve. What this suggests is that the only reason humans managed to push their way into the age of technology is that they had to. Necessity is the mother of invention, and as the world changed around them, they had no choice but to evolve and learn to survive. Viking Settlement Archaeologists may have just discovered a Viking settlement in North America. A team of researchers from the University of Alabama at Birmingham, along with several other archaeologists, believe they have found evidence of a second Viking site in the Western Hemisphere. If proved correct, it would be the first Viking settlement found in over 50 years. The discovery was made thanks to satellite image analysis and a handful of preliminary excavations. This happened at Point Rose in Newfoundland, Canada. Oddly enough, the first Viking settlement, which has been proven real for decades, is also located in Newfoundland. The first Viking site is called Lanz Ao Meadows. The buildings here date back 1,000 years, way before Christopher Columbus ever arrived to the Caribbean and the British to the east coast of North America. If this newest site is proven legit, it will prove that the Vikings may have actually spread out across Newfoundland, trying to set up some kind of larger, more permanent site. Had they succeeded, Canada may have been heavily populated by Vikings way before anyone else showed up. Richard III A team of researchers from the University of Leicester have made a pretty weird discovery involving King Richard III of England. According to the research team, they discovered a skeleton with battle wounds and an unnatural curvature of the spine in a parking lot. They believe the skeleton is that of the dead monarch. If true, the discovery could rewrite a rather tumultuous period of English history. In the history books, Richard III was a despised king whose body was thrown into a random river after being defeated by Henry Tudor during the War of the Roses. The legend propagated at the time was that his own people disliked him so much that they just tossed him away and forgot about him. But the rumors that he was deformed and evil were propagated by the winners of the day, and the truth is much more likely that the killed king was buried quietly in a church without much fanfare. After digging through many historical records, the location of the Lost King's remains were still a mystery. But based on some evidence, researchers decided to dig up a parking lot to look for him, and actually found remains on the property of the Grey Friars Church in Leicester. Much of the older church had been destroyed over the years, and the burials inside had been covered by an empty lot. 
but underneath were hidden secrets, and all this could mean the king was never tossed into a river at all. Archaeologists are fairly certain the body is his. They still need to do more tests to find out, but all clues point to it being that of Richard III. The fact that he was given a proper burial, albeit a pretty sloppy one, could go to show that many of the rumors surrounding Richard are false. The team said that even though Richard has been portrayed as a villain, he was probably just an ordinary man who fought in battles and tried to do what he thought was right. The thing is that he lost. Roman Sword in Canada A Roman sword was discovered on Oak Island in Canada and nobody knows why. Oak Island is a small piece of land just off the coast of mainland Nova Scotia shrouded in mystery. You may know it from the lost treasures and curses rumored to surround the place. Unsurprisingly, if you travel straight across the ocean, the next piece of land you hit happens to be Ireland. This is why Newfoundland, slightly above Nova Scotia, is known to have the first and only Viking settlement anywhere in the Americas. The Vikings touched down by accident probably thanks to a current. Nobody expected a Roman weapon to be found here. It's one thing if the seafaring Vikings accidentally made it to North America. But if there were to be concrete evidence that the Romans were the first Europeans to reach the New World, well, it truly would change the history books. So how was the Roman sword discovered? It was found by two brothers just off the coast of Oak Island in what they say is a shipwreck. The ceremonial sword was allegedly taken from the wreckage. Unfortunately, it's proven hard to properly authenticate where the sword came from or how it got to Canada. It's been dated back to around the year 190 AD and may have been a kind of ritual votive sword used by a Roman. However, it's hard to believe that an actual Roman brought it to the island. Perhaps it was brought over through trade or placed there on purpose. In any case, unless any other Roman artifacts are found, it is hard to say what happened. The Early Americans A controversial new discovery in Mexico could change how we look at the history of human beings in the Americas. The way it goes in the history books is that 13,000 years ago, hunter-gatherers walked across the ice corridor that connects Asia to North America. They became the first people to ever walk on this part of the planet. These people then migrated south and spread to all corners of North America, over thousands of years developing their own distinct cultures. These people were known as the Clovis, and they were believed to be a single culture that dominated North America. But according to archaeologists affiliated with the University of Zacatecas in Mexico, People entered North America up to 33,000 years ago, almost doubling the previously accepted narrative. But how could this be possible? The archaeologists actually made a pretty good case. They studied 42 archaeological sites throughout North America and Beringia. Beringia is the area between Russia and Canada where the Bering Land Bridge once stood, and they found evidence that people have been trickling very slowly into North America for a long time. Many artifacts from many places date back further than 13,000 years, and the migration wasn't something that happened all at once, but rather over a period of at least 23,000 years. Long Lost Egyptian Queen The famous necropolis of Saqqara in Egypt is revealing more and more secrets every year. Each discovery made has the potential to change history. The Saqqara necropolis, located near the Egyptian capital of Cairo, has been the source of great discovery in the past handful of years, with more and more history-changing finds being uncovered. Most recently, archaeologists have found the abandoned temple of the Egyptian queen Nate, wife of King Teti. But why is her tomb so important? She was a long-lost queen that no one was even looking for. Until now, archaeologists didn't even know who she was. She's a new and powerful queen in the lore and history of ancient Egypt, even though historians already knew about her husband, King Teti, who was the first king of the 6th dynasty, which lasted between 2323 BC and 2150 BC. But they had no idea about his powerful wife, which is surprising given that she was also buried in a magnificent chamber. Along with dozens of mummies and coffins, archaeologists also unearthed papyrus scrolls full of what looked like spells or prayers. They were magical incantations that Egyptian priests would use to help direct the dead on their way to the afterlife. The team of archaeologists excavating the site has also found so much more. They discovered ancient games, funerary masks, statues and figurines, a miniature boat, and a total of about 54 colorfully decorated coffins. Archaeologists have only excavated 30% of the tomb so far, so there still isn't a lot of information about this mysterious woman. But in the days to come, they are sure to find out more. 
new type of human. A dramatic discovery has been made in Israel regarding our ancient ancestors. The bones of a very early human, previously unknown to science, have been uncovered near the small city of Ramla. It happened just this year, 2021, with the human bones dating back about 130,000 years. There are plenty of Homo species known to science, with the oldest dating back 400,000 years, and then some even more ancient species of hominin-type creatures dating back 3 million, though these aren't of the Homo species. The reason this discovery is so interesting isn't because of how young the species is, but because of how weird it is. According to Science Daily, researchers believe this new type of human could replace the Neanderthal as our closest relative. And yet despite this, the creature in life looked nothing like we do. Based on its skull, it was kind of hideous. The ancient human had no chin, its eye sockets were square instead of round, and it had great big teeth completely unlike our own. Scientists have no idea what to do with this new fossil or where to put it in our confusing family tree, but it's definitely going to change history. Dragon Bones The history of dragon bones in China is a curious one. In the year 1899, the Chancellor of the Imperial Academy Wang Yirong got sick with malaria. He went to his local apothecary looking for a cure. The medicine man there sold him a very expensive and very popular remedy, dragon bones. They were said to come from real dragons and would cure his malaria if he crushed them up into powder and drank them. But Wang noticed after taking the bones home that they were covered in ancient Chinese symbols. They were very small and hard to see, but they were definitely there. He decided not to drink the bones and keep them. After he eventually got a little bit better, he went back to find out more information about the dragon bones. His investigation ended in the year 1900 when he died, probably from malaria. But another scholar named Luo Zhenyu finally found the source of the dragon bones nine years later, outside the small city of Anyang. There were thousands of them, and local farmers told him that the bones were often dug up by people who would sell them as fake dragon bones at apothecaries. The truth is that the bones were actually ox bones used to tell the future by ancient oracles. They were magical, just not in the way the locals thought. Archaeologists flocked to the small town of Anyang and began collecting these ancient oracle bones covered in carvings. Oracles had used the bones to try and predict the future. And to do this, they wrote the date of the question asked, the name of the person asking the question, what the question was, and the results of their prophecy. This gave historians a unique look into the past and changed the way they saw ancient Chinese society. The oracle bones are a window that allows us to look into the past as they were trying to predict the future. Tarteso Civilization Slaughter Human bones have been discovered at the archaeological site of a pre-Roman civilization in the southwest of Spain. Located in Badajoz, experts say it could shed some light on the extremely mysterious civilization. In fact, chances are you may not have heard of them before. They are called the Tarteso Civilization and they flourished around 2,500 years ago. They also had a complete and abrupt collapse of their society that left barely any trace of them remaining. Between the 9th and 5th century BC, the Tarteso civilization was rich and sophisticated. Even Greek historians were impressed by how gracefully the society functioned. There is even a Greek myth that says Hercules once visited their glorious kingdom. They became rich by trading with the Greeks and the Phoenicians, but after 500 years of prosperity, the civilization abruptly declined. Scientists believe it may have been caused by an epidemic, climate change, or invading Celtic tribes. As for the human remains discovered at the new site, they were located inside of an old building that dates back to the height of the Tarteso civilization. What's really fascinating is that the structure appears to have been built with a type of cement, and this is several hundred years before the Romans ever invented their famous cement technology. This structure was probably some sort of sanctuary that contained a treasure trove of artifacts. Around 30 skeletons of animals have been uncovered so far that look like they were sacrificed before the building was set on fire and then buried maybe as some sort of ritual. The fire and ash helped to preserve everything for us now. Archaeologists found human bones on the first floor and were quite surprised since the Tartesians usually cremated their dead. Experts are hoping that the unique burial and building here will tell us more about this lost advanced society. Largest Energy Beam Scientists in 2021 made one of the most incredible discoveries out in the universe. 
Scientists have been puzzling over powerful beams of light energy that flash from time to time inside of our galaxy, usually inside of a random hotspot. Nobody has been able to figure out what these bursts of light are, other than, of course, pure energy. We simply don't know how they function or what creates them. However, scientists working with the LASSO, also known as the High Altitude Aerial Telescope, just detected the largest beam of light energy in recorded history. How large was it? Scientists say it boasted about 1.4 quadrillion volts. If that sounds like a lot, that's because it is. Most things in your house only need a 12-volt plug-in to charge. What the discovery of the energy beam suggests is that inside the Milky Way there are particle accelerators that push electrons and protons to blistering speeds, creating intense energy beams. However, the discovery has not shed any light on what causes the reaction or what the energy beams can do. But there should be more discoveries coming soon, as the lasso becomes fully operational by the end of 2021. And who knows? Maybe scientists will figure out how to make their own 1.4 quadrillion volt energy beam. That's a scary thought. Jewelry from space. The Hopewell culture flourished in the Midwestern United States from between 200 BC and 500 AD. This was a widely distributed society connected by a network of trade routes who lived in multiple cities. There are several remaining artifacts left over by the Hopewell culture, though many of their ancient cities have been lost. Scientists know that they made impressive relics from copper and silver. However, a new discovery made by a team of scientists shows that the Hopewell culture also manufactured jewelry from outer space. These people made very impressive pieces using iron extracted from meteorites. Beads were found inside of a burial mound in Illinois back in 1945. More recently, thanks to modern technology, scientists were able to take a closer look and found that they were made from meteorites. The iron taken from the meteorites to build these beads cannot be found anywhere else on Earth, literally. Because of this, scientists believe that the Hopewell treated these objects as extremely precious, although it's hard to know for sure just what type of meaning they attach to it. The truth is that many ancient cultures viewed falling meteorites as religious symbols that should be worshipped. This includes other ancient cultures like the Egyptians. There was even a gem found in Tutankhamun's tomb on his jewelry that came from an enormous blast caused when a meteor struck. Thousands of years before Egypt's Iron Age, people were stringing together beads made from iron meteorites. The Inuit people also worked with this material. Researchers decided to try to find what meteorite the beads came from. They determined that it came from the Anoka meteorite, which solves a partial piece of the puzzle. But many questions still remain. Gold Bars in Stomach A team of surgeons recently made a shocking and incredible discovery inside of a man's stomach. It all happened when a team of Indian surgeons opened up a patient, a man who had been complaining of abdominal pain, only to discover a literal fortune. The man's name was never released for safety reasons, though CNN confirmed that he had been hiding 12 bars of gold in his stomach. The patient was 66 years old and visited the hospital after complaining of agonizing stomach cramps and extreme nausea. He told doctors that he accidentally swallowed the cap from a plastic bottle. Nope. He had apparently smuggled the gold bars into the country to avoid paying the import tax. Each bar of gold weighed an astonishing 33 grams, according to the doctor who conducted the surgery at the New Delhi Hospital. On the day of the surgery, the metal bars were pulled out of his stomach. But this guy's plan didn't turn out very well in the end, as the hospital staff handed over his precious metals to the authorities, and it's now expected that he will have to pay that 10% tax on his goods. Either that, or he may just never get them back from the police as they stay in evidence for the next 45 years. Not really worth it. Illegal Roman Shipwreck Artifacts Spanish authorities were doing a routine inspection of a seafood store when they came across an incredible discovery. They found several historical artifacts dating all the way back to the ancient Roman Empire. They found storage containers that came from a Roman shipwreck known as Amphorae. While inspectors were going through the shop in Santa Pola, they saw the containers and realized they were obviously very old. For whatever reason, they thought the artifacts in the fish shop were suspicious, and so they contacted the proper authorities. The regional cultural department then moved in and confiscated what they would later find out to be genuine shipwreck artifacts. In total, 13 ceramic containers were found dating back to the 1st century AD. 
All of them were in almost perfect condition. Since their discovery, they've been transferred to the Santa Pola Museum. But just how exactly did these fishmongers get their hands on such precious goods? It turns out that the items may have actually come from two separate shipwrecks. It's likely that the fish shop owners had hauled them out of the water themselves, seeing as there are literally dozens upon dozens of shipwrecks along the coast of Spain and the Mediterranean, many of them dating back to the Bronze Age. Since getting busted, two men in charge of the shop are now being investigated for crimes against historical heritage. The thing is that it's a crime to possess historical objects of significance without reporting them, and it's definitely a crime to loot a shipwreck. Higgs Boson Decay In 2012, there was a scientific breakthrough that rocked the world of physics. The Higgs boson, also known as the God particle, was finally found. This subatomic particle was predicted 50 years before its discovery. It's what basically gives every single thing in the physical universe mass. But in a new study by researchers at the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, it turns out that the Higgs boson doesn't live very long and quickly decays into smaller particles such as photons. Photons, of course, being the particles that make up light. Research has shown that the legendary God particle decays into a single photon and two leptons. Lepton particles are strange, as they can be either charged or neutral. Two examples of charged leptons are electrons and muons, both subatomic particles. What's even more fascinating is that research showed that the Higgs boson can also decay slightly differently, reverting into a single photon and a pair of muons with opposite charge. It's all very strange and extremely abstract. But these are the first steps to humans understanding the quantum universe. Researchers at the Large Hadron Collider say that it's incredible discoveries like these that get us closer to understanding things like gravity and dark matter and stretching our human knowledge beyond what physicists refer to as the standard model, which explains everything we currently know about how our physical universe works. Ancient Fossil A pair of paddleboarders were enjoying a day out on the water when they discovered something incredible. They found a piece of fossilized coral that has since been confirmed at over 300 million years old. These guys had just been trying to soak in some sun and clean up their local river, an activity known as rubbish paddling, when they made the bizarre discovery in Scotland. Amazingly, one of the paddlers happened to be a geologist, and he spotted the fossil right away. But it wasn't until later that they discovered just how old the fossil truly was. It comes from a time when Scotland was actually closer to the equator and populated by tropical beaches and vibrant, colorful corals, a time known as the Carboniferous Period. This fossil isn't exactly rare knowing Scotland's prehistory. It is likely a type of extinct horned coral, and there are plenty of those fossils to be found through the locks and rivers of the country. This one was found in Lochline Gorge, right on the rocky banks of the Eyre River where anyone could see it. The Ugliest Orchid The ugliest orchid in the entire world was making headlines back in 2020 as one of the most incredible discoveries of the year. Orchids are flowers that are typically seen as pretty. They come in all different colors, they smell great, and they are often seen as a symbol of purity. But this new species of orchid is positively hideous and may even be one of the ugliest flowers in the world. It almost looks like a rotten flower that's come down with some kind of disease or flesh-eating bacteria. Even more fascinating is that the ugly orchid was only one of a handful of amazing plants and fungi recently discovered and documented. Scientists found six new species of toadstools near Heathrow Airport in London. Three additional toadstools were found in Scotland, and 19 new orchids were discovered in New Guinea. In 2020 alone, scientists at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew named and published the scientific details of approximately 156 species. But as reported by the BBC, there are about 2,000 new plants and fungi being discovered each and every year. Many of them aren't even found in places where you might expect, like the Amazon. For example, many new flowers and fungi are found all throughout the United States and the UK. It's usually the weirder ones that are found in remote jungles. The ugliest orchid in the world was actually found hiding inside a forest in Madagascar, where researchers also discovered two new types of aloe. Viking Helmet True Viking helmets are some of the rarest artifacts coveted by archaeologists. This is because in the 10th century, back when Scandinavians and Saxons both began converting to Christianity, they both stopped being buried with their helmets on. 
The only reason helmets are preserved for upwards of thousands of years is because of the mud in which they are buried. This is what makes the discovery of the second, almost complete Viking helmet so amazing. The helmet was dug up by workers back in the 1950s in England and put on display at a Yorkshire museum. But it wasn't until recently that a new study in medieval archaeology confirmed it to be one of the rarest examples of Viking armor in the world. We often see depictions of Vikings wearing helmets with horns, but this never actually happened. That style was created by an opera costume designer in the 19th century. Genuine Viking helmets look pretty much like other helmets from England or Greece or France, but a little different. This helmet was made of iron bands and plates fixed together with rivets. This style is known as the Spangenhelm, and it was popular all throughout medieval Europe. Other than this mostly intact Viking helmet, the only other one to have been found in modern history was in Norway. Unknown Galactic Forces A new and very incredible discovery may be changing how we understand the composition of the universe, at least according to Associate Professor Steen Harl Hansen from the Niels Bohr Institute's Dark Cosmology Center. Steen made a new computer model to replace dark energy, what is widely believed to be a mysterious force pushing the universe apart, causing it to perpetually expand with dark matter in the form of magnetic forces. In other words, Steen has been trying to understand why dark matter allows the universe to expand at a seemingly exponential rate and thought maybe there could be magnetic forces at work. One of the popular theories prior to this study was that dark energy, different from dark matter, takes up 70% of our universe but cannot be measured. Scientists don't know where it comes from and they don't understand how its energy works. By replacing dark energy with magnetic forces, Steen may have disproved the existence of dark energy at all, seeing as all the math states that the universe would expand at the exact same rate simply by the magnetic forces pushing everything ever outwards. Of course, it's all wildly more complicated than this. The main thing you need to know is that dark energy, the thing that supposedly makes up 70% of our universe, may just be magnetism. Dark energy might not even exist. Scottish Ghost Village Brew, a former farming town in Scotland's Shetland Islands, located just south of the Arctic Circle, experienced extreme weather, including bone-chilling temperatures and harsh winds. Oddly, however, the settlement ultimately succumbed to sandstorms that began pummeling the island around 1665. While windswept sand from the shore was nothing unusual, these storms occurred on a magnitude unlike anything the townspeople had ever seen before, destroying their homes and crops and giving them no other choice than to flee. Scientists have long wondered why Brew suffered so severely, while nearby towns experienced far less damage. One reason the sandstorms were uncharacteristically unforgiving was timing, as a mini ice age permeated the globe during the 16th and 17th centuries. But that still doesn't explain why Brew bore the brunt of Mother Nature's misgivings. Using a technique called optically stimulated luminescence, which detects the last time sediments were exposed to light, historian and archaeologist Gerald Bigelow of Bates College in Lewiston, Maine, led a team in excavating and studying the site. They identified evidence of much worse than usual sandstorms hitting Brew in the mid 16th and late 17th centuries. The evidence aligns with weather reports from the era detailing unusually harsh wind conditions, while a computer simulation suggests the wind speeds decrease significantly right around Brew, causing the immense sand deposits that ravage the town. But geography, timing, and weather don't fully explain the situation, according to Bigelow, who speculated that the introduction of a grass eating rabbit population, along with sheep grazing near the coast, perhaps helped to destabilize Brew sand dunes. Additionally, Bigelow cites the events that wrecked Brew as a sign that modern climatologists should consider the potential effects of climate change and how they may differ even between places that are very close to one another. While much of the explanation behind Brew's destruction is based on theory, some researchers have admitted that it seems credible. What's your opinion? Let me know in the comments below. Pyramid-shaped Chinese burial. In March 2017, archaeologists discovered a mysterious pyramid-shaped tomb beneath a construction site in Changzhou, the capital city of China's Henan province. 
Based on an initial analysis, experts surmise that the tomb likely dates back to the Han Dynasty, otherwise known as China's Golden Age, which lasted from 202 BC to 220 AD. The strange structure, nicknamed the Pyramid of Zhengzhou, is just six feet tall, and researchers are unsure who was buried there and why it was made in this shape. The pyramid is one of two found inside a coffin chamber, with the other one in the shape of a half cylinder. The chamber is 98 feet long and 26 feet wide with a little aisle leading to them. Locals were just as baffled, yet fascinated by the discovery, with one resident describing it as truly magical, adding, I've never seen anything like it. During the suspected era of the tomb's origins around 2,000 years ago, China experienced a booming economy, which included the introduction of the Silk Road, a series of ancient lucrative trade routes connecting the East and West. There are other circular-shaped tombs with pointed roofs that have also been found in the region. What do you think about these pyramid tombs? Let me know in the comments! Royal Stone Head In August 2019, archaeologists digging at Shaftesbury Abbey in Dorset, England, discovered a 14th century stone head that, in the words of expert Dr. Julian Richards, raises a lot more questions than it answers. Richards led the excavation that uncovered the artifact, which was found with a rosary bead. The gender and identity of the head is unknown, although it depicts a royal, perhaps the monarch Edward II, according to an examination performed by Dr. Jonathan Foyle, director of Build Heritage Limited. It dates back to the 1340s and boasts a similar hairstyle to other known images and carvings of Edward II of the time. Hairstyles can also be quite generic, Richards admitted. It could be a queen rather than a king, or a general royal figure to emphasize Shaftesbury's royal connections. King Alfred the Great founded Shaftesbury Abbey in 888 as the first religious house for women, and was dissolved in 1539 by the famous, or infamous, Henry VIII, depending on how you view him. The building was completely ruined by 1550, with much of its stone being repurposed for other constructions. Archaeologists were nearing the end of their work at the site when they found the stone head, which is unlike any other artifacts collected there. Both the head and the rosary bead will be on display when the Shaftesbury Abbey Museum and Gardens, which are closed due to the ongoing global coronavirus pandemic, reopen in spring of 2021. Strange Mythical Bathroom Tile Beast while excavating the basement at the Courtauld Institute of Art in late 2019, archaeologists with the Museum of London Archaeology, or MOLA, discovered a 14th century cesspit that was paradoxically filled with priceless artifacts. A cesspit and artifacts? That should not go together. Included among the treasures were a gold-plated ring, an iron horse-riding spur, and a double-pronged post-medieval fork. The most intriguing among the artifacts was, in the words of MOLA senior archaeologist Antonietta Lertz, who spoke with Life Science, a strange, mythical creature with a human head at one end and a leaf-like tail at the other. Measuring roughly 15 by 15 feet and at a depth of over 13 feet, the chalk-lined cesspit was used for storing human waste for at least a century. It once sat beneath Chester Inn, the Bishop of Chester's London home. While this might sound gross, these places are amazing for archaeologists because you can learn so much about a culture from their waste. The chamber was converted into a cellar by the 17th century. Subsequent changes were added, with the last addition to the space being a small 19th century latrine. The valuable artifacts that were found in the pit were presumably thrown away or left there over the years. But archaeologists lack an explanation for the floor tile bearing the strange beast, which dates back to sometime between 1350 and 1390. They identified it as a pen tile, manufactured in the Buckinghamshire village of Penn. But how an item that was normally used in monasteries ended up in a cesspit remains a mystery. Three Whale Rock Hin Sam Wan, or Three Whale Rock, is a 75 million year old rock formation in northeastern Thailand that, when you look at it from the sky, looks like you're looking at a family of whales swimming through the forest. At the right angle, it looks like they are jutting out right over a cliff or mountaintop that also looks like a wave. They are situated on a remote mountainside in a nationally protected reserve containing the Kala Rainforest, Fu Sing Forest, 
and Pink Dong Forest. The landmark, characterized by a series of three rocks that stick out from the landscape, is reachable via a lengthy trail network that offers nine different routes to the top. Once you get there, you can access breathtaking views, including the Mekong beaches, the mountains of the Pakading district in neighboring Laos, and Fu Wua Forest. The unusually long, smooth shapes of the three whale rock formations have understandably drawn widespread attention regarding their origins, because they look very unnatural. People wonder if they were perhaps smoothed out by humans, or if they are natural, how did they form in this shape? Most scientists agree that the structures formed naturally, acquiring their current shape as a result of millions of years' worth of exposure to the elements. The rock is sandstone which weathers quite slowly and looks kind of similar to those found in the southwest desert of the United States. They may have been carved by the wind, but these formations are in the jungle and not in the dry desert, which is much easier to carve. But some people wonder why the formations at Three Whale Rock are the only examples of such bizarrely shaped rocks in the area. What happened here? What do you think? Did this strange site form naturally? Or do you think we're missing something? Let me know in the comments below. A brutal end. A recently published study depicts what experts believe was the first case of intentional facial mutilation in Anglo-Saxon England. A young woman's nose was removed, most likely as a punishment. The findings are based on the 1,100-year-old skull of a young woman whose nose and upper lip appear to be deliberately removed and who may have also been scalped. Her injuries are consistent with historical records detailing punishments of female criminal offenders, but the age of her skull predates these written accounts by about a century. We can only speculate as to what happened in this instance, but the highly formalized nature of the woman's injuries suggests penalties for specific actions, such as sexual deviancy, or at least a perception of such, lead researcher Gerard Cole told Life Science. The discovery of the skull itself is nothing new. It was found during the 1960s amid routine excavations prior to the construction of a housing development. Yikes, glad I didn't find it. Then it was placed into a collection that sat in storage until it was rediscovered relatively recently. The skull was paid such little attention after its initial discovery, in fact, that it was still covered in soil when scientists revisited it. Based on the new findings, the victim was likely between 15 and 18 years old when she died, sometime between 776 and 899 AD. An isotope analysis of her teeth suggests that she was from outside the area. As far as her injuries go, both wounds seem to have been made by a sharp, thin-bladed weapon, Cole explained, most likely an iron knife. There is no evidence of the teenager's wounds healing, indicating that she died while receiving the barbaric punishment. Quite a horrible way to go. How the young woman died is far less of a mystery than why. When it comes to whatever she supposedly did wrong, unless written documentation is found, we probably won't ever find out. Mummified Penguin Cemetery A team of biologists led by researcher Stephen Emsley from the University of North Carolina recently discovered a large collection of mummified penguins in Cape Irizar. While this might not sound that strange, this is a part of Antarctica that penguins are not known to frequent in the first place. Based on radiocarbon dating, the remains range from a few hundred years old to anywhere between 5,000 and 8,000 years old. While many of the remains appeared fresh, breeding penguins have not been recorded at the site since ancient times, according to Dr. Emsley. The team recently published their findings in the journal Geology, explaining in the study that even Adelaide penguins, the southernmost breeding penguin species, have no known active presence in Cape Irizar. Emsley and his colleagues are at a loss to explain the number of dead penguins there. Overall, our sampling recovered a mixture of old and what appeared to be recent penguin remains, implying multiple periods of occupation and abandonment of this cape over thousands of years, said Emsley. Climate change apparently revealed the penguins, which had remained buried under snow and ice for around 800 years since the Little Ice Age. Melting led to their discovery and also led the researchers to realize that this may also be why penguin colonies stopped visiting the island. As temperatures warm, however, this could change. Our only option is to wait and see. Unusually placed corpses. Almazan, a town in Soria in Spain, is seemingly inconsequential in today's world, with its small population of just 5,500 residents. But during medieval times, it was a powerful political hub that important historical figures passed through 
and it was the perfect meeting point for strategizing invasions into Muslim territory. A newly published study called Al-Mathan, its necropolis and medieval walls, details the grisly discovery of 22 human corpses throughout Al-Mathan, 11 of which were buried beneath the town's stone wall. Researchers believe that the wall, which is surrounded by a moat, was built in 1128. They also speculate that there may be more bodies at the site, waiting to be discovered. Unfortunately, their knowledge is severely limited by a stone that went missing after it was removed from the wall in the late 19th century. The stone contained an inscription, which modern researchers believe may be the key to identifying which king commissioned the wall's construction. According to records, the message mentioned a king named Alfonso, but the stone mysteriously vanished after the Royal Academy of History took possession of it in 1896. The institution confirmed that it no longer has the stone, and has no idea where it is. To further complicate matters, more than one Alfonso ruled over the region over the years. The study attempts to tackle another of Almazan's mysteries, namely the strange placement of the bodies found there. They formulated three possible scenarios, the most likely one proposing that the burials were in place before the wall's construction and did not stop the builders from building it anyway. Whether the graves belong to Christians, Jews, or Muslims is another unanswered question, as they all contain traces of wood, which was customarily used in burials of all three faiths. It seems as though scientists may never fully uncover the town's history without the missing stone, which hopefully turns up. The Chaco Culture The architectural remains of the Chacoans, ancestors of the Puebloans, are found in northwestern New Mexico in the form of a vast building complex known as Chaco. Dating back between 850 and 1250 AD, the structures were once home to as many as 5,000 people who thrived in the arid, extreme climate, which sees scorching hot summers and frigid winters. There are over 400 archaeological sites at Chaco, including Pueblo Bonito, a two-acre site containing an 800-room building that once housed an estimated 2,000 people and was equipped with sophisticated irrigation systems. The 1,000-year-old ruins boast other sophisticated features of their time, including roads. By all appearances, Chaco appears to have been a trading hub, but it also may have had ceremonial and political purposes. Researchers aren't quite sure, although some modern tribes in New Mexico consider the site sacred and occasionally hold ceremonies there. The multi-storied buildings at Chaco are oriented in solar, lunar, and cardinal directions, reflecting the civilization's advanced knowledge. Chaco was mysteriously abandoned during the 13th century, and experts are still trying to understand why. The prevailing theory suggests that methods necessary for building the site, namely deforestation and poor land use, played a perpetuating role in Chaco's collapse. Researchers recently called this theory into question in a study that was recently published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. In the new findings, scientists from the University of New Mexico claim that there is no solid evidence to back the theory that unsustainable land use or the over-allocation of resources contributed to Chaco's abandonment. While the study rejects popular notions revolving around the settlement's end, it fails to come up with an alternative explanation, leaving the world with no choice but to wonder what happened to Chaco. Thanks for watching! Remember to participate in the giveaway and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new here! See you next time! Bye!